in the studio, Will Anderson. Will, good morning. Oh, thanks very much for having me, fellas. I am, I am so excited to be here this morning because this is the first time I reckon I can ever say that I have been performing to crowds the same size as a one-day international final. <laughs> that doesn't mean my crowds have been that big. But <laughs> That's a bit harsh because a lot of us went down late yesterday. Yeah. When we knew Australia was going to win. Exactly. About, about five balls before the end. We all arrived. <laughs> Ready for the game. Now, we, we, we've, uh, we, we've been talking off air about the fact that we had a, a, a text just a little while ago to say, hey, have you caught up with the fact that last night on SBS, a newsreader got caught and chatting away, not knowing he was on the national oh, no. broadcast. He was actually on the air. So we thought that we'd share this with you because I know you want to hear it, but we're asking you to put the beeps in if you wouldn't mind. Oh, yeah, I can definitely do that. That's fine. <laughs> and, and cast a gruen transfer for uh, ear over it. Tickled pink, access to cupcakes. What's that? <laughs> huh? What was well, that Well, they're talking to you? This is the makeup artist. <laughs> Don't be nasty to me. I've had enough this <laughs> week. Ask me a question. Why ask me questions for? Would you ask? Would you? The tickled pink would, would you ask? Cupcakes. Would you ask Anton or Janice questions? <laughs> treat me the same way you treat them. It's all going to air. She's busy. She's busy pretending to be a journalist. Oh. PJ. <laughs> hey, listen, so you know for the last one. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that'll do, that'll do. This yeah. is too painful, isn't it? <laughs> this, this is, I mean, you, 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 you've done live stuff for years and there is this kind of fear that one of these days the mic will be open and you don't know. Oh, I think that's the most terrifying thing. Or, you know, when you're just doing live things, I mean, I reckon... Uh, you know, the the most famous one was, you know, when, uh, of course, that night of 9-11 when Sandra Sully was on air and she had to do that. You know, she just was padding out and yeah. doing this live commentary. And, of course, you excuse people in those situations. Yeah. You guys know what it's like. You're having to cover a big event. But I still remember that look on her face when she said the two planes flew into a building which was not their intended destination. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you're thinking, yeah. yeah, that's the tough thing about having to do something live. You yeah, know yeah. that it's always going to happen. And I, I kind of thought that about that whole, you know, the Yumi Steins thing and stuff oh, during the yeah. week. I mean, yeah, she, she definitely should have said what she said. But uh, uh, you've been in situations where, you know, you're on live radio, you're on t- live TV, you just get in trouble. Well, I had a moment this morning earlier, didn't I? Because, uh, you know, he turns the mic on, I've got no idea what's happening, you know. And so uh, I, w- I was, as it happens, I was musing about what uh, Ender was going to be talking about, our correspondent in the UK. You know, what's he going to talk about? Oh, well, that's uh, exactly right. We yeah. don't know what he's going to talk about. What is he going to talk about? And then you think, what might have I said? Oh, my God. Oh, one, once I was, um, there was a spate of uncut shows. Remember, there was like a Big Brother uncut and like all these uncut shows on yep. TV. And so I was on the radio going through a list of sh- other shows I would like to see an uncut version of. Well, for instance? Uh, well, I tried to say the words, and I will get this very careful yeah. for your show, mm-hmm. Rex Hunt. Mm. Yep. Uncut yes. was what I was trying to say. Yes. Let's just assume that that's not exactly what came out of my mouth on air. Yeah, right. <laughs> there are some things you shouldn't try to say. On no, air. exactly. Hey, just off air, just before you came on air, you were talking about how you're enjoying Adelaide more than you ever have. Yeah, I, I just I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's where, where I am with the show or whether it's just like I think the Adelaide Festival. A lot of the more experienced comedians. I mean, I've been coming here for 16 years now. And I've just never enjoyed the shows more. I've never enjoyed the audiences more. They seem to be, like, the festival just seems to be so much fun at the moment. Is like, it you or is it us? Yeah. Are you getting older or are we getting younger? Uh, I, you know, somewhere in between. But I, you know you're having a good show. Where on my first show the other night, I had a, there was a deaf woman in the show, which is a good start. Mm. You feel like you're doing well if you're appealing to the deaf. But <laughs> at one stage, she swapped seats so she could see my lips better. Ah. And I said, well, that's better than her swapping seats so she couldn't see my lips at all. <laughs> then you would know the show's not going well. That reminded me of, there's a very famous comedy story of a guy, in fact, a guy that you guys will, will have heard of, Limo. Uh, oh, and yeah, Limo was doing a gig one night and there was a bloke who was doing really, really badly on stage in the gig. And the bloke was blaming the audience and he started doing the whole tapping the microphone and saying, you know, can you guys hear me up the back? And apparently this little old woman, about 70, has just yelled out, I can, but I'm willing to swap swap seats with someone who can't. <laughs> hey, what's a good room? What, what's a bad room? Where, where do you feel most comfortable? Because, we, you know, you never stop. You, you're performing week in, week out around the world. Where do you feel most comfortable and most uncomfortable? Look, to be honest, I like performing in a room where, you know, people are on the same wavelength as you. That's all it is. It doesn't mm. really actually matter what the environment is. Mm. And that's the great thing about coming to Adelaide. I mean, for me, it's a brand new show, but you're doing it in front of an arts festival audience who get that it's a brand new show? They're going to the garden. 
But, yeah. you know, the very idea of walking through the gate means they're on your side a bit. Yeah, that's right. They're going to see a show in a tent. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. That's all, They've already bought into the idea a little bit. Whereas I did a show on the Gold Coast last year at a place called the Gold Coast Arts Centre, which has to be the most misleading name building <laughs> in history. Uh, I did this, you know, the show I'd been touring all year, and it was as if it was on a time delay. Like, the Gold Coast to me is the only place that when schoolies comes to town, the IQ goes up. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, like say good morning to all about Gold Coast. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'm get that in a little while. This is from Queensland. Yeah. Now, it, we were talking uh, just a couple of days ago with one of the English comedians who's here in town, uh, and he was talking about it being the end of his season, and maybe he'll get a rest after this for a little while. The other way around for you? Uh, complete other way around. So, like, what, what I do is I work on a nine-month tour cycle. So mm. I did my last show 176 times around the, uh, five different countries around the world. Wow. And so I, I tend to do that from – I start it in the Adelaide Fringe and I finish it sort of like at the end of November. So the last sort of two or three months, all I've been doing is sitting with these ideas in my head, trying to work out what I'm going to say in this show. And then I get to kind of – I guess it's like doing a pre-season of footy. Yeah. And, you know, and, and on the first few no- nights, you're willing to give some of those jokes that are more like the young ones that you think might come up or go, because every joke looks good in pre-season. Then you, <laughs> then you do a couple of games and you're like, let's bring in some of the more experienced boys again. <laughs> might be a rebuilding year. Now, how many countries did you, did you say? Six last year. Now, so. do you have to vary it a bit? Oh, look, uh, you know, when I say six countries, it sounds a lot more exotic. I go to a lot of places that I go to America, I go to, you know, the UK, I go to Ireland, I go to New Zealand, I go to South Africa, you know, uh, Canada. They're the sort of, they're places that have a, a comedy tour and a comedy scene. Mm, yeah. But certainly, you d- are, are the audiences different? Mm. Definitely. American audiences are so positive. It's amazing. Like, Obama was right when he said to Americans, yes, we can, because their attitude to life is, yes, yes we, can. we can. You walk out on stage and the audience want you to win too. Right. You walk out and they're like, yes, you can. Whereas in Australia, people are a bit more relaxed. They're a bit Prove more like, yeah, bet you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. in England, they're like, buggy you for trying in the first place. <laughs> so that's basically how it works. So, so this is... This is not a bad place to start then, you know, it's got to, it's got to work. No, it, look, it, it really is. I mean, I know it sounds like a sucky thing to say, but the reason so many comedians come here for this arts festival is it is an amazing place to be able to build up work and also to do fun things around it. Like, the great thing, like, Justin Hamilton and Tom Gleeson and I were having a chat in a bar the other night and we, we were trying to have a catch-up after our shows mm. and people kept coming up to say good day and interrupt us and we went, we can't have this conversation un- uninterrupted. Justin said, well, I've got a uh, room free at 11.45 on Friday night. There's 100 tickets for sale. Why don't we just have this conversation on st- stage and then no one can interrupt us? So we just have decided to put on a late show together where the three of us muck around. And that's the great thing about being at an arts festival is you just bump into people and want to do more creative yeah. things. Well, yeah. we've got a few things lined up for you this weekend. You've got to go to the Adelaide Cup. You've yep. got to go to WOMAD. You've got to go to the street party tonight in Weymouth Street. There's a street party as well. Yeah, yes. yeah we we just found out about that ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, You've got the festival. Yeah, the festival's on. Blimey, Charlie, you did did you miss the cricket? You missed it. Yeah, you had I, to work. The, I I had to work, but I did uh, sit in my hotel room and watched a lot of it yesterday, and then went to my show thinking that Australia weren't going to win, and then finished the show, and everything was great. <laughs> dear oh dear. Well, he's got move. his own show to do, of course. Hey, he, he does have a show. Question Jane without, Doyle. Uh, good morning. A question without notice. Grew and transfer. Have yes. you talked about this we're yet? We were about to say, when? When, yeah, what? when are you back? Uh, look, I, I, I can't tell you or Andrew Denton will break my kneecaps. Oh, oh go on. that's we're a threat. He's, he's over there. Oh, okay, well, look, uh, I, I think it would be fair to say mm. that uh, mid-year. Mid-year. Okay. Yeah. Mid-year there may be some sort of marketing, big marketing event, worldwide event that focuses a lot on advertising, but mm. not, might not be specifically about advertising. Mm. Might be about the Gruen, because, you know, those mature women, and I suspect younger women and older women and women generally, and probably a few blokes who like blokes as well, are waiting for the thinking man's sex symbol, Will Anderson and Todd Sampson. Ooh. Yeah. Come back oh, on the yeah. television. I didn't, I didn't realise we were that sort of show. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Maybe mate. we should be late night on SBS. We <laughs> definitely are that sort of show. <laughs> Don't tell Denton. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Cheers, guys. Will, Will Anderson. Anderson, he's on, he's on, he's been on at the Garden of Unearthly Delights uh, in the uh, the traveller tent. Uh, he's started already, and he's on for some time to come. Eight thirty each evening.